back to iScience. Today's experiment is soup can races. I was inspired by a YouTuber who was racing soup cans uh, down a ramp and I thought I would give it a try. Something interesting happened though. When I did my experiment, I couldn't get the same results that he was getting. So I wanted to do a little bit extra with it. So I'll show you how we did it and then you can do your own experiments at home and give it a shot. What do you say? Let's do some iScience. So with our cans here, you can see we have beans, we have collard greens, we have soup, we have, even have a can of coffee just to see some things that were different. You can see with our setup here of our ramp, we had the ramp and I put a piece of tape on the ground so that that would be our finish line. Okay, so here's the data we collected. We um, wrote down the type of can. Um, we did three trials down the ramp with each can and recorded the time. We took an average of those times. That helps us with the error, you know, because sometimes you mess up, you don't start or stop the clock at the right time, or I didn't let it go when I said go. Uh, so that taking that average helps us uh, with that error. We also looked at the can diameter, the, the, round, the size of the can, uh, and we looked at the weight of the can. We actually got that right off of the can itself. Um, and then we came up with our own value here. This is the sloshiness value. Because in the YouTube video that I saw where the guy was explaining soup can races, he said that, that things that are sloshier will take longer to go down the ramp. And that was what we were having trouble seeing. What we did is we assigned a sloshiness value by just shaking the can. And the cans that were the sloshiest, uh, we gave that a four. The, the cans that didn't have any slosh at all, we called that a one. So that was our sloshiness scale. So that's our data. Here's our data. Pause now if you wanna examine it closely. So now that we've collected all of our data in a spreadsheet, it makes it easier to see some of the trends in the data if we graph it. So what I did is I took the data from the spreadsheet and I graphed it. And if you take a look at our graph here, this first graph that I did, uh, along the x-axis here, I have the can type. And then along the y-axis here, I have the average time down the ramp. And you can see across my graph here that things are kind of all over the place. There's not a really clear trend as to which type of can is going to be the fastest or slowest. So uh, what, I, what I did was, uh, you remember that value that was on my spreadsheet, sloshiness? Sloshiness was our attempt to measure how sloshy the material was inside the can. So we took the can and shook it, and we decided those that were seen sloshier, we rated them higher on our sloshiness scale. We went from one to four, one being the least sloshy and four being the most sloshy. Something interesting happens when we graph the, our average time down the ramp versus sloshiness. Let's take a look at that data. So here's our x-axis again. This is sloshiness. And you notice that our data plots here, these are individual uh, plots. This is a scatter plot. This red line is our trend line. And what this shows is that as sloshiness goes up, overall, the average time down the ramp goes up. So that means that the sloshier the can, the slower it is down the ramp. And this confirms what that YouTuber guy that got me started on this with, how he explained it. He explained it that the cans that are sloshy, the material inside the can uh, will rub up against the inside of the can, creating friction, which keeps the can from spinning. The slower the can spins, the longer it takes to go down the ramp. So the sloshier the soup, the slower the can is gonna spin down the ramp. So our experiment confirms that. Well, in science, what we really want to do is we wanna have lots of people repeat the experiment so we can see if they're the same. And if we keep coming up with the same answer over and over again, then that makes us think that we're on the right track. So what I need you to do is give this experiment a try at home. Find your cans, identify those cans that are the sloshiest, Make sure that they're all roughly the same size. Make sure that you have your ramp set up and that you are able to keep all of that the same, that they all have to roll down the same distance. And use your iPhone or a stopwatch or something to record the time. Then let me know how your experiment came out versus my experiment. I would love to see how that all works out for you. 
So soup can races are a super easy experiment for you to do at home. Just make sure that you keep your controls the same. Make sure that the cans are the same size. Um, make sure you note their sloshiness by giving them a shake. Uh, and make sure that you have your setup the same for each can, that it gets to roll down the ramp the same and that you're using the same timer. I would love to see your results. Um, and so please share them with me. Um, and thanks for joining in today on iScience. We'll see you next time.